All right. Um, so I wanted to address your question about that problem with Beetlejuice. And like you said, it did have to do with angular size. So let's look at this expression for angular size that should be found in your book. So when we look at this expression, the angular size is like the angle that an object will cover in the sky. That could be um, called the angular diameter or the angular size, or it could be the angular separation between two objects. So notice right here that this is something in degrees. And if these two quantities have the same units, like if they were both measured in meters or something like that, then the units would cancel out. And so our answer that we expect is going to be in degrees. So you were told, this was the information, you had that the star was had an angular size of 0.05 arc seconds. Now that's not a degree, and that it was about 600 light years away. So the arc seconds is the angular size, and the light years away is the distance. And so what we're actually trying to find is the actual size of the object. So let's look at this expression that I wrote, and let's think about how we could rearrange it so we would have the actual size. So if we sort of um, multiply and get this actual size all by itself on one side, we would have the angular size. And we would multiply by the distance. And we would also di divide by the 57.3 degrees. And you can see here now, if the angular size and this are in degrees, those degrees will cancel out and our actual size will have the same units of the distance. Um, so there's a couple different things that we need to do here um, in terms of sort of units. Uh, the angular size is given to us in arc seconds and that's really not that useful because, um, because of the fact that this quantity right here is in degrees. So we need the arc seconds to be converted into degrees. So we found that there's 3600 arc seconds in one degree. And so this becomes a conversion set factor. Notice that those cancel out. And if we do that division, we would get 1.389 times 10 to the minus 5 degrees, which makes sense. We should expect that the um, uh, angle is going to be really small measured in degrees, and that's why it was measured in arc seconds in the first place. Um, and the other thing is if we use the light years for the distance, then our actual size would also be measured in light years, but a light year isn't really a the type of thing that we would have or the type of way that we would measure the actual size of a star because it's not going to be that big. So what we're going to do is we're next we're going to change this into meters. So we're going to have to go into um, another slide. And so we have 600 light years and we can look up a conversion factor and 9.46 times 10 to the, f oops, one light year is 9.46 times 10 to the 15 meters. Because remember, light years are really big. So if we change the distance for the star, it becomes 5.676 times 10 to, oh, I have the 8th, 18th, I think, is the right thing. 18, no, 8, sorry, 8 meters. Yeah. No, it's 15. So I'm sorry. I keep making mistakes. So this should be 18 meters. So the power is 18 and this one is 15. So um, let's review the 
expression that we had come up with, we had said that the actual size could be found using the expression for the angular size times the distance divided by the 57.3 degrees. And now we're going to put in our values. So we got 1.389 times 10 to the minus 5 degrees. That was the actual size divided by 57.3 degrees. So those are going to cancel out times the distance, which is 5.676 times 10 to the 18 meters. And this should give us the actual size of the star measured in meters. Um, so that's how you do that. I hope that that's a little helpful um, to thinking about how we might approach a problem like that.